Hey everybody, Chad Boyle, EXP Realty Atlanta, Georgia. All right, so I just got back from a listing presentation. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm gonna get it or not. Um, the guy already told me up front, he said that he's interviewing some uh, you know, agents this week and he's not gonna make a decision until Friday, whatever. So I just came home and I just kinda wanted to just do a debrief on the listing presentation, how it went, what I did well, and what are a couple things I need to work on. And I just want to share those with you. I think it's a valuable process after the listing presentation. You know, don't just leave and forget about it. Just, you know, take a moment. I mean, li it literally took me like less than five minutes and just, you know, kind of wrote out, okay, here's, these are the things that I think I did well um, that, you know, kind of worked. These are the things that I need to work on for next time. So a couple things that I did really well tonight. Uh, first off was uh, frame control. So um, we had scheduled this at seven o'clock and he texted me at some point in the day and said, um, we're gonna need, to, I need to move this back to 7.30 so we can do this in 30 minutes. And so he was trying to impose whether you know consciously or unconsciously a frame control on me. And so I said, hey, no problem. I can be there at 7.30, I have to leave at 7.50, so it's no problem, we'll take care of it. So I, by implementing this 20 minute frame control on him, I'm imposing my frame, um, so I'm not being needy, um, um, going along with what he suggests. So I think I did good there. Now second thing, and this is one thing where I've struggled in the past, is people will say, you know, that dumb stuff that they say at a listing presentation, like their preconceived notions about like how they think real estate works. And like in the past, like I either like, you know, wasn't all there or maybe I was just focused so much on, on what I was going to say that I, I really wasn't effective in responding to those things. And tonight we were talking about the strategy of getting the house sold and um, getting multiple offers and all this. And uh, so I suggested that he, you know, slightly underpriced his house, of course. And he was saying, well, I don't think that that's a good idea because if I'm the buyer and I was, I was saying, you know, his house is probably worth around, you know, 353, 345. I was saying we should, we should list it at 3249. Um, and there's no risk in underpricing your house unless you're too eager and take the first offer that comes along, of course. So he was saying, if even if I knew that a house was worth three fifty, and they were asking three twenty four nine for it, I wouldn't I wouldn't go up that high. He, he said I would offer the list price or may, maybe probably five thousand dollars more. And I said, hey, that's no problem. I said because you're going to get left in the dust if that would happen because there's going to be 15 other buyers and there's going to be six offers and you're not going to be one of them so you're not going to end up living in that house and we will sell it to one of these people at 350 or even more and so basically what I did was just you know that was his experience his experience is that he himself is uncomfortable with paying more you know maybe five thousand dollars over but he wouldn't pay more because somebody had asked for a certain number and that was his experience and he created a story which was a belief out of it and so what I wanted just to show him was that there was there are other experiences that other people could happen and to try to change that belief and when I said that you're gonna get left in the dust I could see that land on him and sink into him and he fully understood what I said so hey I did good there that was one thing and then he also said, and I don't know if this has happened to you guys, but this has happened to me before, and I really wasn't very, didn't handle it very effectively, but I did good tonight, I believe. And you can let me know, hey, if you think how I handled that was crap or, you know, there's a better way to handle it, please, by all means, reach out to me and let me know, or just please leave a comment here for the other people that watch this after the fact. But he said, and this, the guy, the guy's house was grossly overpriced. So started off at like 390. Like I said, the fair market value is probably 345 to 350. Um, he started off at 390. The last price was 365. So he said he's talked to a few other agents. They came over. They said, you know, 
well, it was it was the marketing wasn't done properly, and it was the pictures. And I said, well, I said, you know what? I said I saw the pictures, you know, and they weren't good. Um, I don't know who took them, but it wasn't a professional. Um, it was obviously cell phone pictures. I said that's why I use a professional photographer. I said, but your problem wasn't marketing, and your problem. I said, hey, it's real easy for somebody to come over here and tell you, hey. Your house wasn't marketed, or it was the pictures. I said, the pictures weren't your problem. I said, they probably didn't help you out any, but that's not why your house didn't sell. Because you were asking $390 for your house, and all the buyers in the market that were looking at a house around $390, they were also looking at houses that were worth $390, and they were able to get what you have and even more for the same price. And so they ended up finding a better deal than your house, and they chose them over you, and that's why your house didn't sell. And so, like I said, I haven't been able to effectively handle that in the past, but I think that response, and I don't know, it went something like that, but I thought that was pretty effective because it's these agents that come over here, and they don't have anything to say, and they're like blowing smoke up people's ass, and these people buy it. It's r ridiculous. But anyway, so I think I did that well. So those are like a handful of things that I think I did well. So now, what do I need to work on? And of course, what I still need to work on, so this was a little different because I didn't do my whole listing presentation. I mean, I had to like get down to it because like we only had like a short period of time. So I was just getting down to business. Um, but I got to get more polished on the delivery. And I just got to get smooth. And it's just, it's just a matter of practice knowing my the parts and pieces of my listing presentation because I should be able to just pull a piece out and recite it no problem anyway so I got to work on that and number two is I get really like intense and like maybe like over the top like se too serious at a listing presentation and I got to really lighten up and fi figure out a more like playful fun way to deliver now I did have some moments in the beginning and we were kind of like joking around about some things that happened when he tried to rent it out uh, before and like he had to evict the guy which that was good but like um, just as I get into it and get into more details um, that's where I kind of get really intense and I don't know maybe it's because we're talking about details and like you know the brain uh, they can't you can't have fun while you're doing that type of stuff so anyway I gotta work on that so that's what I'll work on so I just wanted to share this with you. This was a valuable process just to go on a presentation and then come home. Just take a few minutes to think about it and, hey, even share your thoughts on a video. So uh, appreciate you watching this. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe. Just go ahead, hit the button. Um, be more videos. Um, I've gotten – make sure you watch my cold how to cold call using Mojo video. That was the first part in the series. Uh, it's an overview of the process. I diagrammed it all out, and I walked step by step through that. And then next week, we will go over the actually get into Mojo, look how how do things look in Mojo, how does it all work, and all that good stuff. So we got that coming up. So if you need anything, need any help, I'm here for you. Hit me up on Facebook. Give me a call, 678-761-2493. If you know of anybody who may be looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, uh, give me a call and have an awesome night.